Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at an infinite creature combo deck featuring a Sporeweb Weaver and Terror of the Peaks from M21. So the way the combo works is pretty straightforward. We need a copy of Terror of the Peaks in play, the 5 mana mythic rare dragon with flying, saying spells your opponent's cast that target the terror, cost an additional 3 life to cast, but the relevant part here is, whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Next up we need to play a copy of Sporeweb Weaver, 3 mana 1-4 with reach and hexproof from blue, saying whenever a Sporeweb Weaver is dealt damage, you gain 1 life and create a 1-1 one, one, a green sapperling creature token. So if we play Sporeweb Weaver or any other creature with Weaver in play alongside a Terror of the Peaks, Terror of the Peaks will trigger, we get to deal damage to any target, including our own Sporeweb Weaver. So let's say we play the Sporeweb Weaver, deal 1 damage to the Weaver itself, the Weaver will trigger, gaining 1 life, making a 1-1 sapling token, which once again triggers Terror of the Peak's ability, letting us deal 1 damage to any target, so we can once again deal the damage to the Weaver and keep making Sapperlings. Now the problem here is that at some point we'll deal lethal damage to the Sporeweb Weaver and it's gonna die and we don't get to make as many Sapperlings as we want, but that's where we need the third combo piece, which is a way to give the Weaver indestructible. And we've got multiple ways to accomplish this. We've got two copies of Resolute Watchdog, four copies of Selfless Savior, and then two copies of Heroic Intervention, which can all make our spider indestructible, meaning we can deal as much damage to it as we want, and that way we get to make as many sapling tokens as we want, essentially making infinite 1-1 tokens, and at the same time also gaining infinite life thanks to the Weaver's ability. So that's the infinite combo that the deck is trying to assemble. Of course, it's a pretty janky deck. We're playing a three-card combo with some creatures that aren't all that amazing by themselves, so we don't expect to win a ton of games with this, but if we get to assemble the combo once in today's video, I'll be satisfied. And then another way we can potentially go infinite with Weaver without making it indestructible is with two copies of Heliod Sun Crowned, because whenever we gain life we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment we control, and since the Weaver also gains one life whenever it is dealt damage, we can put a plus one plus one counter on the Weaver itself, so instead of making it indestructible we just keep putting plus one counters on it while dealing one damage to it, so it's never gonna die, and at the same time we also get an infinitely large Weaver besides making infinite sapperlings and gaining infinite life, so that's another way to potentially combo off. So let's take a look at the entire decklist, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've already covered our dogs, two copies of Resolute Watchdog, 1 mana 1-3 one, that we can sacrifice for 1 mana to give a creature indestructible until end of turn, and the full playset of Selfless Savior, which is definitely the preferred 1-drop to give indestructible, as we don't have to pay any additional mana. And then we also have the full playset of Adventure's Impulse as a bit of card selection to help us assemble the combo. We can look at the top three cards of our library, reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into our hand, and the rest goes on the bottom. Then at 2 mana we've got also the full playset of Bond of Flourishing as another card selection card. 2 mana for a sorcery that lets us take a look at the top 3. We can reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into our hand. Rusco is on the bottom and we also gain 3 life, so very similar to Adventure's Impulse. And then we've got our two copies of Heroic Intervention, which besides making our creatures indestructible also gives them hexproof, so very useful at saving the team from a sweeper effect or from spot removal spells. And then we've got the full playset of Paradise Druid, since we are trying to ramp into some expensive 5 mana cards as quickly as possible, and the Druid also helps fix our mana. Then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Heliot, which besides being a combo piece with the Sporeweb Weaver, is also just a synergistic card with the Weaver. If it's randomly dealt damage it can put some counters on it. We can use the ability for 1 and Y to give a creature lifelink, and that's another way of putting counters on it. So it can also potentially help us win a fair game without comboing off. And then we've got the full playset of a Lenor Visionary as a 3 mana 2-2, that when it enters the battlefield draws a card and taps to end green, so it helps us ramp and also gives us a bit of additional card draw. And then we've got our full playset of Sporeweb Weaver, 4 copies of Terror of the Peaks, which is also just a fine card to play normally, and then 2 copies of Shared Summons, which for 5 mana is an instant, that lets us search our library for up to 2 creature cards with different names, reveal them and put them into our hand. So this can help us find 2 of the 3 combo pieces, which is usually enough to then combo off on the following turn. 
and then a mana base, pretty straightforward. We're not playing any copies of Fabled Passage since we don't want to shuffle our deck, since we're putting cards on the bottom with Adventurous Impulse and Bond of Flourishing that we would rather not draw. So we've got two plains, two mountains, two forests, then four stomping ground, four temple of abandon, the scry one also useful at assembling the combo, four sacred foundry, four temple garden, and two temple of plenty for another scry land. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a pretty decent hand. We've got Dragon and Weaver, a few accelerants, just missing an indestructible trick, but there's no lack of those in the deck. Opponent on some sort of Demir control deck might make it tricky to assemble the combo. Ooh, the first two lodges their opponents on the mill deck. So I guess I'm down to just play visionary here. And I'll keep the paradise route untapped so they can't easily kill it. Drown Secrets, more Mill. Is this where I play the Dragon and hope they can't kill it? And then there's a chance I can combo off next turn? Sure. Let's maybe take a look with Temple first, see what's on top. Although it is going to get milled by the Tutelage anyway, so I guess I'm fine keeping a Temple on top. But if we did find one of our indestructible uh, creatures, then maybe I would have cast a bond here instead. Frantic inventory is gonna mill us for a bunch. All right, let's see for points packing removal. Both of my shared summons are gone into the story to draw some cards. Okay, that's fine. So can we find the missing combo piece here? Although infinite life is not necessarily enough to beat the mill deck. And a Graf Digger's Cage, that's fine. Ooh, Heliots. Heliots actually a pretty big game since that means we can make one of our creatures infinitely large. Although without indestructible, it's the spider that's gonna be infinitely large and not one of our untapped creatures. So I wouldn't be able to attack for infinite necessarily, but I guess that's good enough. Just make infinite tokens, gain infinite life. Hope they can't mill 27 cards next turn. Deal one to the Weaver. And Heal is gonna start putting counters on the Weaver as well. Now the question is, how many tokens do we want to make before we call it a day? Opponent could easily have a Ritual of Soot in their deck or some other Sweeper. Which means that the infinite Sapperlings are not necessarily gonna get to attack. So I guess we'll call it a day at uh, 20 tokens here. And then the last couple... Plus one counters I can also place on Terror of the Peaks. Alright, so this deals damage to the Weaver. Heal it, puts a counter on the Terror of the Peaks. Maybe we want to diversify, although if the card I'm worried about is Ritual of Soot... I guess it could also have... Extinction events, but that doesn't deal with the tokens if they deal with uh, odd numbered creatures. So I'll just put all the counters on Terror of the Peaks, I think. Alright, and then deal one damage to my opponents. And the last counter on Terror of the Peaks. And attack for 10. Alright, so we've got technically an infinitely large weaver and infinite tokens. 
Let's see if my opponent can mill me out here. Into the story. Alright, that's gonna draw four cards, so that mills for eights. And they have two mana remaining. So 15 cards and a thought erasure, that's not gonna do it. So I think we got there. Opponent didn't have much in the way of interaction. But they were gonna mill me pretty soon here. 13 cards left, so next turn they probably would have killed me. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And uh, yeah, we've got all three combo pieces in hand here. Just need to hit our land drops and we'll be in great shape. And a cool thing about Selfless Savory is that it also just protects our combo pieces before we go off. So it's actually a pretty nice creature to be able to play early on. Facing Stomping Ground. Opponent also with the Paradise Druids. Alright, I want to avoid tapping my Paradise Root, I think, in case my opponent has a stomp from Bone Crusher. So I'll just play the Weaver and pass. And then the Savior can trigger the Terror of the Peaks. It's the turn we combo off. So I wouldn't be able to combo next turn, but I also wouldn't be able to combo if I played Savior. Because I still need to trigger Terror of the Peaks to begin with. Bang of Holding, interesting. Alright, Temple, so won't be able to play the Dragon this turn. But if I keep a land on top, I can combo off next turn. Visionary, not quite. I guess playing Heliod also means I can uh, potentially attack with an infinitely large Sporeweb Weaver. So we'll run it out there. And I'll keep the Weaver back on defense. Put on discarding an Ugin's Conjurant. Maybe this is a uh, Song of Creation combo deck as we see the blue mana. Uh oh, so if our opponent has a Song of Creation here, they could potentially go off. Instead, they didn't. And we drew a land, so it is go time. Play Terror of the Peaks. Play a Selfless Savior. Let me go into full control real quick. Target to Weaver. And then we'll make it indestructible in response. Now this isn't actually strictly necessary because we have Healy in play as well. So I could just go with the infinite counters. But this does give me the flexibility of putting the counters on a different creature than the Weaver. Although for now we'll put a few on the Weaver. Alright, so the combo is starting to take shape. Opponent doesn't seem to have any interaction, but if they have their own combo with Song of Creation, they could potentially win next turn by drawing their entire deck and casting a Thassa's Oracle. But no, opponent packs it in. Alright, well, we had a great opening hand and we were able to assemble the combo on turn 5 here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And yeah, this hand's okay. It's a little slow since we need to cast Shared Summons to assemble the combo, but it does fetch up both the Spider and the Dragon. Facing an Alsade. And I'm happy just keeping another land on top. The Visionary also helps. So this is, might be the green-white Hexproof Aura deck. Which means they probably won't have much in the way of interaction. But they will probably kill me pretty quickly. Opponents not willing to tap their Paradise Druid quite yet. Of course they don't know that we don't have any removal. So play Visionary. Next turn we can Summons. And then we're not too far from the combo. Their season of growth to draw them a lot of cards. 
Alright, so far they're not dealing too much damage, which is good for us. So I can pass a turn with Shared Summons available. Now it's possible I should have played Heliod instead of the Visionary. Just so I have my indestructible trick already in play, but we do have Intervention in hand, so that also works. Although it is going to cost me two mana. Sentinel's Eyes. And a training. Alright, the damage is piling up now. If our opponent has an all that glitters next turn, we could be dead. Interesting, tapping blue mana. Okay. Attacks for six. And vigilance means it's still hexproof. Alright, let's assemble some combos. Get the weaver. Now I don't have enough mana to play all the combo pieces, but I do have enough mana to keep up heroic intervention, so worst case scenario I can just block the paradise roots and make the dragon indestructible, which might save me. And then next turn I can combo off by playing Heliot into Weaver. So I think that's probably the way to go here. Don't know if my point is other pump spells I should be worried about. Carmetra's Blessing, that's one of them. So they're still trampling over for four. But that's not lethal. Alright, is it combo time? I think so. Play Heliods. Play Weaver. Deal one to the Weaver. Now I could have also given the Terror of the Peaks lifelink with Heliods. I guess I would have gained me even more life. But uh, I think we'll be okay. I don't think the aura deck can beat infinite life and infinite sapperlings. If you're playing this deck, you do want to make sure that you turn off the enable gameplay warning settings. Otherwise, it's going to keep asking you every time you target your own Spore Web Weaver with Terror of the Peak's ability, whether you're sure that you want to target it. So that's going to waste a lot of time. So make sure to turn off this setting when going through the combo. I think the realization might be starting to set in for our opponents. Alright, sweet, and our opponent packs it in. The combo proving to be a lot more consistent than I thought it would be. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We're missing the spider, so that's gonna be the goal here to try and find it. But we have a fine curve in the meantime. Facing turn one swamp. And we could of course just win a fair game where we play turn four Terror of the Peaks and start attacking with it. Kitesail Freebooter is gonna take my intervention and see what I'm up to. No real way of killing the Freebooter, so that intervention is probably gone forever. Maybe I guess the Terror of the Peaks can kill it eventually. Underworld Dreams, I see. So point might be on a Devotion deck, or they might be playing Peer into the Abyss to combo with the Underworld Dreams. And there's a Weaver. Alright, well, I gotta play Visionary first still, I think, and then I can play turn 4 Terror of the Peaks. Turn 5, play the Weaver, which will then trigger the combo. And then we should be in great shape. Although, of course, our opponent can be packing some interaction here. 
Hopefully the saviors are enough to protect the combo. We can maybe beat a Ritual of Soot, but Extinction Event is going to be much harder to beat. Opponent with a Grim Shooter. Uh-oh. So that could fetch up an Extinction Event. Since they know about Terror of the Peaks, that's likely going to get cast next turn. And that would be a one-sided board wipe. But the fact that they're playing Grim Shooter also confirms our suspicions that this might be appear into the Abyss deck. So I don't know if I can afford to tap out for Terror of the Peaks here. I might have to take a different approach. So how about I play Sporeweb Weaver? They might want to hold on to their Sweeper for Terror of the Peaks. And then next turn I could play Terror into Watchdog and still combo off. Let's see what we find with the Impulse Firsts. Another Terror of the Peaks. Ah, it's good to have a bit of redundancy. Although if I want to play Terror of the Peaks and Watchdog next turn, I will need an extra land. So maybe I should take the land. If the hope is to be able to combo next turn. What if they just cast the Extinction Event? Then I guess I also need the land to cast Terror of the Peaks. Uh, we'll take the lands. Might not be the most intuitive play. And then I can attack for two. Play Weaver. And cross our fingers. Opponent takes it. Alright, no extinction events, please. They could have also gotten a hand disruption spell, in which case getting the second terror would have been better. Nyx Lotus instead, okay. I guess they want to cast Peer into the Abyss next turn, but uh, Infinite Life should beat Peer into the Abyss here. Alright. So we get to play Terror, play Watchdog. No! It didn't keep white mana untapped. Disaster strikes. Oh, but our opponent blocks. Oof. So in a, a nice turn of events, our opponent cooperates here and lets us combo anyway. The auto tapper tried to sabotage me, but uh, our opponent comes in with a save. All right, so we get to combo after all. Without Heliod, the combo is a lot faster. Now the problem is, I probably need to make a lot of saplings here, because Peer into the Abyss with Underworld Dreams can deal a lot of damage. So normally I could call it quits right about now. But uh, yeah, I think I have to keep going for a while. Now after a while, for some reason, the combo slows down and you have to click Resolve manually. So what's the worst case scenario? My opponent plays a second Underworld Dreams and then casts Peer into the Abyss. I would be drawing 23 cards. I would lose half of my life. And then I would take 46 damage. So I need... Yeah, at least 100 life here. To be safe. One of the rare situations where you actually do need to gain all the, all the life you can. Alright, we're at 100 life. We'll kill the Freebooter with the last point of damage. And hope that our opponent uh, can't kill us here. They did also lose one Devotion in the process, which could matter. Alright, our opponent's back. Plays a fifth land. So they have enough mana for Peer. Or even Dreams into Peer. I kind of hope they have Dreams into Peer now, so I didn't waste my time getting 100 life. 
Obnixilus the Hate Twisted instead. Don't think that's gonna do it. Unless they also have a sweeper here. All right, and our opponent packs it in. Wow. We haven't been playing against the most competitive decks, I'll admit that, but uh, we have been able to assemble the combo very consistently, so I'm very happy about that. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? We're basically just missing the dragon, and we do have Heliot plus Weaver, which in some matchups is pretty decent. I'll try it. Temple helps us cry, can keep any of our adventurous impulses or Bone of Flourishings as well. Bone of Flourishing also synergizes with Heliod. And try and find our dragon. Temple Garden, I don't think I can keep here. We'll probably find more lands along the way. Turn one Grazer, so we're up against a ramp deck. Ooh, there's Terror of the Peaks, okay. So, yeah, we just need a, a land or two here. Turn to Nessian Wanderer, so they've got some enchantment synergy. So what's the ideal sequencing? Probably Heliot first, then Terror of the Peaks, then Spore Web Weaver combo off. And keep the Paradise Road untapped. Because Heliot is not going to trigger Terror of the Peaks, since it's not a creature when it enters the battlefield. Alright, let's hope they don't have removal for my dragon. Because the drawback of Heliot, unlike the Savior, is that it doesn't protect the Terror of the Peaks. Sanctum of Shattered Heights. So our opponent's playing a Sanctum deck. Alright, so they shouldn't be able to kill my dragon here. Okay, so... Can't believe that I'm saying this, but we're about to combo off for the fifth time today. And I don't think a Sanctum deck is going to be capable of beating infinite saplings and infinite life. And our opponent packs it in. Wow. And we even had the white mana here to activate Heliod, giving Terror of the Peaks lifelink, which would have uh, also meant more plus one counters from Heliod, so that's also a small interaction to keep in mind. Sweet. Well, today's gameplay couldn't have gone any better. We won every game, and we managed to assemble the combo every game. Granted, we didn't play against any tier one competitive standard decks, but that was never our intention to beat those. I was just uh, happy to be able to combo off here and show how the combo works. So definitely a successful day of janky combos. That's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.